Let's talk about the layout of the top toolbar. The top toolbar starts on the left hand side with an info mode toggle button. This is the only toggle button within this toolbar. Now this button when it's activated it turns to a, a golden background and it dramatically changes the scene interaction. And it's only used when required and then you should deselect it again because in big scenes this could slow down your interaction with the scene quite considerably. And it allows for picking of any type in the scene and selects the corresponding box objects in the list boxes or the data grids. So it's a very useful thing to use but use it with caution. The next three buttons all create new objects. The first button is the mark points object. So there you create volumetric points like spheres or cylinders or anything that marks something. And these this points can then be saved as CSV files and you can open it directly then as marker data. The next one is map disks where you can create oriented disks by one, two, three or n points. And then these disks can then directly open as mapping data. Um, in, in the ribbon as I show with my mouse button. The last one is the lines tools button and this is where you can create lines, you can design lines and not only lines, also rectangles and cylinders which could represent tunnels underground. Then you've got the color palettes and you'll see that's palette number one and that's palette number two. Now these paint existing of objects on different parameters. They thus don't create any new objects. They just take existing objects and do some color coding on, the, on them. Then you've got two toolboxes, toolbox one and toolbox two. Now these toolboxes create new objects from existing objects and then save them as a DXF file and then automatically load them into the scene afterwards for use for other functions. Then you've got the split and boolean tool. So these crossed swords split and cut, cut objects in different ways, normally on planes or between different meshes. And when you work on the mesh mesh interactions, it works in about 90% or maybe more cases, but there's still some of the mathematics that I'm struggling to work out and it's not always working for all geometries. Then you find the split and delete tool. So this is a slightly different split to the previous one, although there's some similarities. What this one does, it splits meshes into multiple objects and then and it can also permanently remove selected triangles from the scene. But be careful with this function at the moment, this one has got no undo. So when you make a mistake, you just reload the original file of files um, in your scene. Now when you use this final tool, something will come up where it sometimes forces you into a parallel view. So let's discuss the difference between perspective view, which is the default in Gem40, and parallel view. In perspective view, the scene has a vanishing point, which makes triangles or objects further away from the camera, and you looking from the viewpoint of the camera, so it makes it smaller towards the back. So this view provides a depth perspective, but pixel perfect selections across the scene is not possible for obvious reasons. So although this is, a, this is the default view and is very useful for some functions, you need to go to parallel view. In parallel view, the scene has no vanishing point and triangles are the same size irrespective there is distance from the camera. So this view allows for pixel perfect, sele perfect selections, but it's not always as useful to use when you visualize and interpret information that you look at. If I go back to the previous perspective view and you follow this line and you follow it to the back and you do the same to this line that I'm showing now, you'll see eventually these two lines will meet, which would be the vanishing point. But if you do the same in the parallel view, these two lines will never meet and that's why you call it parallel view as these lines will be parallel all the, ways, all the way into infinity. So this is a summary of all the buttons that you've got in the top toolbar and roughly what they all be standing for.